Farmer yields across sub-Saharan Africa fall far below their potential, largely due to limited access to quality seed potato. Low multiplication efficiency at early stages of seed production have greatly limited the availability of commercial certified seed. Critical to seed production is the availability of early generation planting material which can be multiplied further to commercial certified seed. Many tubers have been the standard starter material for seed production. Introduction of rooted apical cuttings provides a game-changing technology to complement seed production by accelerating early generation seed production. Derived from tissue culture plantlets, apical cuttings are rooted transplants that can be used as an alternative starter material to mini tubers for seed production. Cuttings are produced in several stages. First is the production of tissue culture plantlets. In the next stage, tissue culture plantlets are grown, maintained and multiplied to increase the pool of mother plants from which the cuttings are produced. Once rooted cuttings are transplanted in the field, they produce tubers for further multiplication into commercial seed for farmers. Let us take a closer look at the stages of rooted apical cuttings production. The production of rooted apical cuttings begins in the tissue culture lab where in vitro plantlets are multiplied through meristem cultures, a process that helps to eliminate viruses and other pathogens. This step is critical to guarantee disease-free starter material. In vitro plantlets are multiplied in sterile plastic containers with growth media. These containers can hold up to 20 in vitro plantlets. Test tubes are mostly used for longer period conservation of planting materials and can hold 2 to 3 in vitro plantlets. These are placed in a growth chamber with temperatures set between 18 to 24 degrees centigrade and kept there until root systems are established in roughly three to four weeks. In vitro plantlets are ready for use as mother plants when they are six to eight centimeters tall and have four to five leaflets and nodes. Screen houses for cuttings production should be completely protected with insect nets. Plastic sheets are used in cool environments to increase the temperature inside the screen house. In hot weather, 50% shade net on the ceiling will help to lower the temperature and prevent direct light inside the screen house. Commonly used substrate media for rooted apical cuttings is cocoa peat. However, other substrates such as sterile sand, vermiculite, peat moss, perlite, or a mixture of these substrates can also be used to establish mother plants. The growing media must be well drained to avoid over wet conditions which will impede rooting. If using cocoa peat, soak it in soft water for 12 hours, then wash it with running water to achieve a pH range of 6 to 6.5 and electrical conductivity below 0.5 units. This takes 3 to 5 cycles to achieve. Use an EC pH meter to measure the pH and electrical conductivity levels in the substrate when washing. At high pH levels, major nutrients will be locked up and become unavailable for uptake by the potato plant. High saline levels in the substrate can stunt growth and cause yellowing in the leaves. As salt levels increase to more toxic levels, scalding or burning on the tips and edges of the older leaves occurs. The leaf withers and falls off, and finally, the plant dies. Plants grown in cocoa peat tend to become calcium or magnesium deficient over time. Thus, these nutrients must be added periodically in the form of calcium nitrate and magnesium sulfate. Fill the bottom of the crate with substrate media deep enough to plant the tissue culture plantlets that will serve as mother plants. Plantlets should be spaced 5 by 5 centimeters apart in the crate. Substrate can be added to the crate as the plantlets grow. You can also plant tissue culture plantlets in plugs that are at least 5 centimeters in diameter. When transferring the in vitro plantlets to the substrate media, you can minimize mortality by acclimatizing them in the screen house. 
Acclimatization is achieved by keeping tissue culture material in a low light setting with temperatures ranging from 18 to 23 degrees centigrade and a relative humidity of 65 to 80 percent. After 12 hours in the screen house, partially remove the lid, then fully open the lid, leaving the plantlets exposed in this state for 18 to 24 hours before transplanting. If plantlets show sign of shock, such as collapse of the shoot or scorching, messed with clean water, then close the lids to hold back. Once acclimatized, use forceps to pick up the plantlet from the container, then wash with clean water and rinse to remove adhered nutrient agar or gel. Drench in a dilute fungicide solution to control blight. The sucrose and nutrients present in the gel can serve as medium for the growth of potential disease-causing organisms. The in vitro plantlet transplanted to the substrate media is maintained as a mother plant in a physiologically juvenile state throughout the production period. This is measured by existence of simple round leaves, dark green vigorous shoots and stems which are soft and easy to root even in the absence of rooting hormones. Once mother plants have established, apical shoots can be taken to make more mother plants known as submothers. Submothers are derived from the first one to three cuts from a very juvenile and prolific tissue culture plantlet. The aim is to allow rapid multiplication rates of a high potential tissue culture mother plant. They should be cut at two to three nodes from the tip of the plant. Check carefully for the buds at the base of the stem and cut just above the buds. Transplant the shoots to crates or plugs. These are referred to as sub-mother plants and will form a pool of mother plants to produce rooted apical cuttings. Cultural practices are applied to ensure mother plants remain juvenile during the production cycle. This can be done by cutting back the shoots regularly to maintain simple round leaves and by regular fatigation with adequate nitrogen applied at two to three day intervals. A well-maintained mother plant can provide healthy shoots for cuttings for up to eight months. If mother plants start to develop compound leaves, this is a sign that the plant is starting to mature and is not suitable to produce apical cuttings. If such leaves form, cut them back to shoots again and see if they will form juvenile leaves. If this does not work, the mother plant is considered exhausted and is no longer suitable for apical cuttings. Allow exhausted mother plants to grow in a crate or outside to produce mini tubers. It is important to top up the crate with more substrate as the shoots mature to allow development of mini tubers. Be sure to calculate market demand for rooted apical cuttings and maintain enough mother plants to satisfy your customers' needs. Shoots that are ready to cut should be two to three nodes long and must have an apical tip, whether they are used for sub-mothers or commercial cuttings. The foliage of very leafy cuttings must be sliced in size to minimize moisture loss. Dip the shoot in water for about 10 minutes before transplanting to achieve a turgid stain. The first time a mother plant is used for cuttings, only one cutting will be harvested per plant. After the first cutting, more shoots will develop from the lower nodes which can be used to produce additional apical cuttings. Over time, the increasing number of apical cuttings produced from a mother plant will follow an exponential pattern. When mother plants derived from original tissue culture plantlets are carefully nurtured, they produce 30 to 70 cuttings from a single mother plant over a four to five month period, depending on the variety and environmental conditions. With sub-mothering, the multiplication ratio may increase to 100 or 150 cuttings over a period of eight months. The number of cuttings is highly dependent on temperature and light. During colder periods, cuttings will take longer for shoots to grow while shorter days can also reduce shooting. During dry periods, when there is no market for cuttings, but mother plants are still young and productive, the shoots should be cut and dumped to maintain a juvenile state rather than let mothers grow out. This will assure that you have mother plants ready for use when the season picks up again. 
synchronize peak shoot production with the onset of peak seasons if target farmers depend on rain. Water mother plants well in the evening before you plan to cut them. Mornings are the ideal time for cutting the mother plants. Always disinfect your hands and all equipment with 70% ethanol before cutting and restrict nursery access to only authorized persons. Cut with a sharp and sterile scalpel just below the third node. Do not make slanted cuts as they create sharp edges that break off or bend easily when planted or dipped in rooting hormones. Trim leaves to reduce transpiration. To prevent dehydration, place the cut stem in a labeled container filled with water where they can remain up to two hours. Prepare the plugs or conical planting trays you plan to use in advance with the available planting substrate. Plugs have mesh to support media, while conical trays will enhance dense rooting that will hold the media in place. Transplant the cut shoots by burying them one to two nodes deep. The shoot must be well firmed in the media. The third node will remain above the surface of the media. Remember, roots develop from nodes, then stem and leaf growth follow, so you will want to promote root development first. Transplant the shoot in a media optimally soaked with nutrient solution. Do not apply too much nitrogen as it will delay the rooting. A balanced feeding regime will prevent the mother plants from overgrowing. Use only water-soluble fertilizers and avoid the use of granular fertilizers. Fertigate every second or third day based on your keen observation. It is necessary to also periodically flush with clean water to wash off any accumulated salts and prevent salinity buildup. The nutrition program should constitute both the macro and micronutrients required for healthy plantlets. Fertigation of micronutrients, including boron, iron, manganese, zinc and copper, requires the use of chelated forms of microzole to enhance uptake. This can be optimized as per local conditions and experience. Soluble pre-made fertilizers can also be used. For instance, to prepare 100 liters of nutrient solution will require 13.6 grams of potassium phosphate, 23.6 grams of calcium nitrate, 50.4 grams of potassium nitrate, 10 grams of magnesium sulfate, and 0.9 grams of microzole A or 1.2 grams of microzole B. Pest and disease management is vital at each stage of the apical cutting production cycle. Before transplanting the plantlets to the greenhouse, install insect traps to help identify the insect pests that could affect production. Yellow traps attract a wide range of insects including aphids, white flies, leaf hoppers, and moths. Blue traps attract mainly thrips. Based on the insect attracted by the traps, appropriate measures can be taken to manage them. Successful control of insects and proper hygiene will ensure sufficient control of most viral diseases. Cuttings will take two to four weeks to sufficiently root depending on temperature. Rooting is faster during warm periods and slower during cold periods. Once rooted, transfer trays for hardening to an area of the greenhouse more exposed to ambient conditions with low shade and more ventilation. Allow them to harden for one to two weeks before they are transported to the field for planting. Rooted apical cuttings are ready for sale when they show the following characteristics. 8 to 10 centimeters in height from the base of the growing media. Short internodes. Strong collar and stem. Well-developed roots. Dark green leaves and a healthy appearance. Most leaves should be simple, especially the bottom leaves. You can transport cuttings in the same trays in which they were produced. Cuttings can also be placed in flower boxes in three to four layers with a clean plastic sheet separating each layer. In such cases, the cuttings need to be planted within 24 hours of packing or removed from packaging and placed in a protected location until planting. Using quality seed derived from rooted apical cuttings has the potential to double and triple local potato production without increasing land usage. Cutting technology 
also streamlines the seed system by providing farmers with rapid alternative technology for early generation seed production. These cuttings can be further multiplied to pre-basic and basic seed to hasten and increase access to certified commercial seed for farmers. Rooted apical cuttings can transform seed systems and increase food security through improved access to quality seed.